Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here, and it's been a great weekend. Some great messages been pre- preached on Friday night, and um, yes, yesterday morning, Richard's um, encouragement and, edi- and, and words of edification through um, courage and conflict. And um, we appreciate that. And uh, ministry yesterday, Brother Brian Ross, and information he's given us, and Tom Brache, <laughs> uh, not Brother Tom Brache, but um, John Vestagen last night, and um, Brother um, um, Apollos this morning, um, right, um, most eloquent Apo- um, Alex Kurz, Alex Kurz, that's the man. <coughs> and he did a great job this morning, and I appreciate that message this morning. And so it's always a privilege to stand here, you know. Friday, uh, and Friday night when they brought out this pulpit, I'm thinking, you know, first thought in my mind was like, well, oh, that's great. Guess what? I get to preach from the pulpit this weekend. So, and um, so it's a, um, it's always a privilege to be here. Short Bible Church is my uh, what I will call my USA base home church, you know, because this is the first church that allowed me to come here in '96 for the first time to visit here, and I'll open the doors for me to come and, and to learn from the work of the ministry here, to learn what's going on um, um, with the ministry, and uh, R- Richard um, allowed me to come into his home, and this church opened their arms and f- for me to come out here and supported us, and so I'm, I'm grateful for this church, and, and I'm not ashamed of the testimony of this church here, and uh, their testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ, and appreciate that. So... <clears throat> I'd like you to turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you will, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'll try to keep the, uh, to keep the accent to a level where you can understand me, and um, so maybe I failed already. Um, I can always go in and speak in tongues if you want me to and, um, and, and do that. But in 2 Timothy chapter 4, we're going to read from verse 1 to 8 there, and I've entitled my message this morning, Enduring Sound Doctrine. Enduring Sound Doctrine. And, um, and I want to sh- this is a study to show you and show us how we, as special, especially as leaders, so this, this is the SDS meetings and as people as training for the work of the ministry and want to be, get involved in the work of the ministry, bishops, pastors, elders, but also deacons, and generally the body of Christ, how it's important for us and how we are charged by God's Word and, and our, our Paul in First Timothy and Second Timothy charges Timothy to 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 to, uh, to to endure sound doctrine and to guard it and to keep it, because there's a reason that many is departing from it. It's been that way since Paul's day, and it's not going to get any better. That's going to be the case, and it's easy to get discouraged in the work of the ministry. I know I need it this weekend, and I needed to, some of the some of the information has been given to me this weekend, because we've just gone through we're going through a rough time at our local church, and 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 just a couple of folks leaving because of not the doctrine, just because of you know silly things, and it's just it's just crazy, and you go through that, and to stand here and say, oh that's okay, that's their problem, and what if you it hurts you because when you work in the work of the ministry, and especially when in leadership you spend and you do spend. You, you, you spend and you, you are spent when you do the work of the ministry and you're part of your own soul into the lives of, of people. And so, and, and, and so, but we need to endure. We need to remain firm. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season out of season, reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, Make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Father, we thank you this morning for this time. We thank you for this fellowship and the ministry over this weekend. We thank you above all for your word that you have given by inspiration, not just given by inspiration, but you also have promised to preserve for us 
inerrant and that we can have it in the King James Bible and be able to study your word. And as we study it and as we consider it, that you give us the understanding in all things. We also thank you that as we believe your word, it work effectually in us that believeth. And we praise you and we thank you for that. By Christ Jesus alone we pray this. Amen. So, what we, we're going to see in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and look at, look, at, look at for me there in verse 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, okay? But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fable. So there's going to come a time, according to this, according to the scriptures here, that Paul says they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, you and I, when we think about people, not those that he's talking about not enduring sound doctrine, we think about the world out there. They don't want to hear it and what have you. We know that's a fact. But when you don't endure something, is that you don't remain, you don't last, you don't continue in it anymore. So that means you had it, and you were part of it, but you can't endure it, and you're going to move away from it. Okay? How do you turn? They shall turn away the ears from the truth. That tells me their ears were there, and the truth was there. Now they turn away from it. Okay? And that's the reality that's going on here. They will not endure sound doctrine. So the issue that I want to say to you is that this is much closer to home than you and I think it is. Turn over with me quickly we will, to the book of Acts. When Paul meets with a, with a, with a, in the book of Acts chapter 20, when Paul meets with the um, Ephesian elders and he gives them some last instructions in the book of Acts chapter 20, and let's go there to verse, about verse 28, I would imagine. Acts chapter 20. He's telling these um, elders of this church, who's been ordained elders in that local church there. And um, he says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, and feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now what do you feed them with? With hay? Stubble? No, you feed them with sound doctrine, okay? Feed the church uh, of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolf enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So they're going to come in among you, not sparing the flock. But look at verse 30, he says, Also of your own selves. He doesn't say of you, of the guys that is at the home church where you've traveled up from towards to meet me here. He says, of your own self. He's talking to the elders there. He says, of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. That's the reality of what's going to go out. That's going to arise from among your own self because why they're not going to endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is going to be replaced with my pride and my own wants, my own desires, and me having a following and a flock and become a big fish in a little pond. That will replace sound doctrine. And they won't endure it. Okay, And so Paul tells us, it, 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 it tells Timothy there in 2 Timothy chapter 4, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers, having itching ears. The word endure means to last, to continue in the same state without perishing, to remain, to abide, to bear, to suffer without resistance. Or without yielding. Endure means to bear with patience. To bear without opposition. Paul says, I, in 2 Timothy chapter, go with me, 2 Timothy chapter 2 there. Although I'm going to come back to that. I'll get back to that passage again. But 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10 says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. What is the, what is the end result that he's looking for? The salvation with eternal glory. And to have that and to do that, what does he need to do? He needs to endure all things. Everything that's going to be thrown his way and come his way, he has to endure it. You and I have to endure it. I have to endure it. Let me tell you something about the work of the local ministry and the work in a, in a, in a local church as, and as part of a member of the body of Christ. It is not an easy task. This is the most difficult job that I've ever had in my whole life. Vocation, if you will. If you don't like the word job. Okay? Because I'm sure not doing it for the pay. Okay? 
If I was doing this for the pay, I'd be doing something else. Okay? And so, so but it, 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 is, it is really, really hard. And I've worked in high-pressure jobs in my life where it's just, just crazy, crazy, crazy. But, but it cannot even be likened unto, and I'm not taking away any of your jobs and the difficulty that you have in your job, but you work in the ministry, you get spent. You take of your own self and it gets spent. Okay? And so we have to endure it. Second Timothy, if you will, Second Timothy chapter 4, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. He says, what do they need to do? They need endure what? Paul needs to endure, uh, Timothy needs to endure what? Afflictions. Now, how do you like, how many of you guys like here to like some afflictions coming your way? How many of you rejoice in the afflictions? Oh, this is great. Oh, this is just, bring it on, man. This is wonderful. Well, it's just really exciting when somebody afflicts me for this, you know, sake of the ministry. He says you need to endure afflictions. That word afflictions means hardship, to suffer trouble as evildoers. You get involved in the work of the ministry and you start preaching the, the, the doctrine of God's, uh, the, the, the truth of God's word and the doctrine of the, the gospel of God's grace and the revelation of the mystery and you make some division. You start suffering trouble as an evildoer. Actually, somebody just called me recently an evildoer. And it's like, wow. And, and, the, and, the, and the basis for calling me an evildoer is not the basis of because I preach the right message. It's because I, I, I didn't want to do something which is contrary to the doctrine. And they'll call me an evildoer. Like, are you kidding me? So it, 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 there's hardships with that. Look at, look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2, if you will, there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the, grace, uh, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore, what is the word therefore there? When the word, you see the word therefore, it's there for a reason. Thou therefore... Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So that tells me when you're going to take this message that you've heard of Paul and received of Paul and seen in him do, and you teach other faithful men to teach others, guess what's accompanied with that? Thou therefore endure hardness. This is a hard job. <laughs> this is not going to be an easy job. This is going to be a hard job. It comes with afflictions. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So that tells me that words with good soldier, that means there's a warfare going on. And we must never forget that. And I'm, I'm sure as believers in the, in, the, in the body of Christ in the church today, we know we're in fuzzy and, and, and entangled with a spiritual warfare that's going on. We don't want I, I wish we could fight flesh and blood. I would prefer that. I would prefer fighting at, you know, when you, when you hit me in the face, you hit me and I bleed, I lose a teeth, I have a blue eye. And my nose is broken. Okay, get over with that. That will heal. But when, when this warfare is so on and it gets you in the soul, in your heart, and you don't sleep at night because of what's going on, that tells me there's a spiritual warfare going on the spiritual level that you and I don't know about. Oh, not know about, but we know about. Sorry. Go with me to Ephesians. Let me tell you something about the work of the ministry. It is not for sissies. It's not for sissies. And I don't call myself a man because sometimes I feel like a sissy when it comes to this. Because I want to quit. I want to run away. I want to get out of the way. Because this is too hard to bear. I think I'm fairly a tough guy. But tough in the flesh maybe. You know. But it's not for sissies. That's why we need to, that's why Paul commands the believers, the elders in, 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 in Acts chapter 20, to the word of his grace, it's going to be able to build them up. We need to be built up by the word of his grace. The doctrine's going to build us and make us strong. Look at Ephesians. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. What did I say? It's chapter 6 there. And let's go read verse 10. This is a warfare. This is something that we need to endure. Hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong. Where? In the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. That same power that raised Christ from the dead, the same power that He effectively works towards us now. Amen. And the power of His might, 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is where the warfare is going on today. We're fighting the satanic policy of evil. That's rife. Okay? It's not against flesh and blood. Okay? And, and, and we, we, we need to take note of the wiles of the devil. In Ephesians chapter 4, in Ephesians chapter 4, if you will turn over there, verse 14 says, look at verse 13. He says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be, henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Now, I believe, verse 13, we've arrived at, we have the completed word of God that will help us not to be tossed to and fro. We can stand and we can remain. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by, what is the next word you say? Slight of men and cunning craftiness. Craftiness, for those of you who don't understand what I said whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You're going to be tricked by con men, and these con men that are doing these things, and the slate of men, and cunning craftiness, where they lie in wait to deceive, they are all working according to the satanic policy of evil. And they don't even know it. Satan, he says, we fight against the wiles. In Ephesians chapter 6, he says, uh, uh, against the wiles of the devil. What is wiles? means tricks, tricks of the devil. Cunning, beguiled, sneaky, deception. Those are the things that's been used with him. When he comes to, to, comes to Eve in the garden, he doesn't come and says, hey, you know what, I'm Anthony, completely against what God says, you know. Look at my big red horns, my big red tail, my three, three-pointed fork. I'm here to get you. No, he comes and he's, 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 he's crafty. He's subtle, says the Scriptures. He's subtle. He resorts to tricks. Go with Second Second Corinthians, if you will. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. And for this reason, we need to watch, watch, watch. What do we watch? Like Richard was saying with the with the binoculars. No, no, was it Richard said with the binoculars? We don't watch like that, our neighbors and things. We watch in the doctrine. We watch when there is a... And for you to watch, to know when there's a counterfeit, when there's something that is not the real deal, you need to know the truth, the sound doctrine, because it will always expose error. Don't go study the error. Study the sound doctrine, because it will expose the error. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says... Verse, uh, verse 3, For I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. When he's going to come and you want to corrupt your mind from the simplicity of Christ, he's going to be subtle. He's not going to be evident and say, I am completely against that. No, he's going to come and say the words that's similar to what it is. It's going to be very, very close. But he's going to be subtle. Verse 13 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's using all his devices. Therefore it is no great thing if his minister, ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Can you see the warfare that we're in and why it's necessary for us to endure sound doctrine and why it's necessary for us to know what's going on and be, 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 be careful because we, the, he wants to spoil us through philosophy. Vain deceit. After the tradition of men and rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And we need to be aware of that. He puts snares out all the way. Go with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. He's a tricky devil. Excuse the pun. But that's what he is. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 20, uh, 20, 26 says, And that they may recover themselves out of the what? 
the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. It's not an open trap. It's not something that you can see a mile away. When I was a kid, we used to have, we were living in a, in a neighborhood and there's a valley between us and the, and the neighborhood's on the other side of the valley. And we used to, on, on, on our vacation, school vacations, we go and build a camp there and, build a, and they build a camp on the other side of the, of, the, of the little river that runs through there. And we would be fighting one another across the river with, 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 with um, uh, you won't understand what I mean with this thing. So I'm not going to do slingshot. I'm going to say slingshots and, and things like that and, and, and all these things. But we, we, would build, we would make snares. We go into the, what we call the enemy territory and make some snares. But we, we cover it up so that they can't see it. And they run and boom, they're in a hole, you know. <laughs> they don't make it open and they can see a mile away. So th- Satan is very tricky. You're not going to see it coming a mile away. You're going to be on top of it. But for you to know there's a snare, for you to know there's a trap, you need to have sound doctrine in you to see this is a trick. This is a trap. Let's not get caught up in this. Let's avoid this. The wiles of the devil, the wiles of the devil is a a snare to keep you from the truth. It's a snare to carry you away from the truth once you have it. Because that's how they not endure it. That's how they turn away from it. A snare that holds you and you become neutralized. Many a times in my life, in my ministry, I became just so close to be neutralized because I want to walk away from it. I don't want to do this anymore. This is too hard for me. Just give me a normal job. Let me not do this work. It's too tough. I want to get away from it. And he would be happy if I don't teach sound doctrine. He's going to attack the doctrine. And he's going to attack if he doesn't know the doctrine, make a, can't make a dent in the doctrine. What's he going to do? He's going to attack the messenger. Amen. And if he can't quit you to do it, you know what he's going to do? Exactly what is happening. And we see it worldwide all over the place. He is going to discredit you as the messenger of the doctrine. And you're going to be called all types of things and say things to you. And they're going to twist the truth just like that to make you look out like you're a bad guy. When we endure sound doctrine and we stand by faith, you know what is going to be the result? Persecution and tribulation is the result. That is going to be the result that's going to come your way. Go with me, if you will, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse 3 and 4 of Second Thessalonians chapter 1 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. This is a church, a model church, if you will, that stands out for their faith, hope, and love. These guys were so effective in the work of the ministry. Paul says, when I get into your area, I don't even have to go to that area, because what? God's word is already spread there. You guys are active in getting it done. But what come, came their way, verse 4 says, so that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye what? So that tells me when they stand for the faith and get, get on with the work of the ministry of the local church that God has ordained to be done, what's going to happen? It's going to come your way, persecution and tribulation. You know what Paul says? He says, when I uh, uh, verse 4 says, so when we ourselves... Uh, glory in you. He says, we, no, no, he says, so we ourselves, we cry for you every day that you're so suffering. You know, there's no glory in this. No, he says, we glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. We glory in that by the churches. You know why? Because when you say these guys are suffering tribulations and these guys are suffering persecutions, you know why? Why are they suffering that? Because they endure sound doctrine. They stand for the faith. I said to my wife, just a few weeks ago, I said, you know what? We must be doing something right. Because why are we suffering like this? Why are we going through this? Because if I wasn't doing something right, and I was doing it all wrong and just off from the truth, I'm sure we will flourish. Amen. <laughs> Better we not. We need to endure all things. Look at Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Thank <laughs> you. 
Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I endure all things for the elect's sake. And that's what we need to do as believers, endure all things for the elect's sake. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, For the time will come when they will not endure. What will they will not endure? Sound doctrine. The word sound, you're not talking about the sound of the piano. And sometimes the piano can make a sound, but it's not a sound noise. Right, David? And if it doesn't make a sound noise, what does it need to do? It needs to be tuned. Okay, so sound here means wholesome, pure, undefiled. It's the pure. Sound doctrine, the undefiled, wholesome word of God. And where are you going to find your sound doctrine? In Romans to Philemon. Your sound doctrine. That doesn't mean there's no other sound doctrine in the Scriptures. All is for our learning. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul talks about, and John talked about a little bit of this. Um, verse 7 says, desiring to be teach. Well, verse 6 says, from which some having swerved that turn aside unto vain jangling. That vain jangling means argumenting and quarreling. And just empty noises. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whether they affirm and exact. And then he says, verse 8, But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners and unholy and profane, murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. Now we can stop them and say, we understand those guys. We see them out there all the time. That's what the law is made for. And next, next thing it says, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to what? Sound doctrine. If I have sound doctrine, I don't need what? I don't need the law. Because I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And declared me righteous. I don't need the law. It's not made for a righteous man. You and I are declared righteous. We have the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ Jesus. First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six and verse three. Verse 3 says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not unto the what? Wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. What is the doctrine that is according to godliness? It's the message of His grace. It's the message God reveals in the revelation of the mystery to the Apostle Paul to give to you and I as the members of the body of Christ. There's where we find our wholesome words. It's going to build us up. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but it's what He's given Paul through the revelation. Does that mean the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was not wholesome? Of course it was wholesome. But it was not wholesome words to you, the body of Christ, and for your edification. It is for the nation of Israel and God's eternal purpose with them and His physical literal kingdom on this earth. And He reclaims His authority back on the earth. You and I are part of a body that God is going to take into the heavenly by which He's going to reclaim His authority back in the heavenly places when He reconciles all things on Himself, whether things in heaven or things in the what? We're part of that heavenly program. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. I found that interesting language, you know, and me, English being my second language, I got to sometimes think about what is he saying. Because when I think of word become, immediately I'm thinking, you know, this, this, this mug is black, but when you put hot water in it, it, become, it becomes a different appearance, right? But become here means, means to be proper, that is according to. That become. Speak out the things which become sound. The stuff that is sound doctrine and He's giving you an instruction, a list of what needs to be given to the church there. 
that the aged woman be sober, grave, etc. The aged woman likewise, that their behavior as becometh holiness. This is the sound doctrine that's going to produce these things. Verse 4, that they teach the young woman to be sober, to love. He gives the order of how the local church is to operate. There's a list of order, but there has to be set an order in the local church as he ordains elders. So that's how the local church must be operating. You're going to see where I'm going with this. Sound doctrine is going to equip us to know how God operates and, and how the local church function within the body of Christ in the area that you live and where you are. Verse 6, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that ye that is of the country part may be ashamed, having no evil things to say of you. For young men, you need to have sound speech. Sometimes young men and young, younger men do not have sound speech. Sometimes older men don't have sound speech. Verse 9 says, Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. That word adorn the doctrine means to garnish, to decorate, to put in proper order. Do you see it? Your conversation has become the gospel of Christ. What are we saying here? We need to hold on. We need to endure sound doctrine. Why? Because many are departing from it. Many is going to turn away from it. Many is not going to endure it. You and I have to endure it to set things in order. When there's sound doctrine in us, and it's working and affectionate at us that believe... Sound doctrines are going to equip us for life and ministry, and it's going to tell the local church who we are and what we are and how we should function. And it's, it's going to be a set of rules, if you will, a set of order within the local church, how we should operate. What we see today, more than, more than ever before that I've seen, is a departing away from sound doctrine. And you know where the areas where I see it, and you guys can say, ah, oh, here he goes again. I see it on the social media. I see it on the, on, the, on the World Wide Web. I see it on, on the Internet. When there's sound doctrine in us, it's going gonna, it's gonna to set a pattern for things in our lives where it's going to help us and, and it's going to equip us and it's going to build us up and it's going to give us instruction that you and I are not going to be striving. We won't be envying. We won't be voking. We won't be, we'll be desirous of vain glory. Because that's what the sound doctrine is going to produce in us, right? And so if I'm striving, if I'm envying and I'm provoking... All the time, provoking, provoking, provoking. That tells me the sound doctrine is not working in me. If that's how I define my ministry. Now, we all know many of us here, we, we're on Facebook. I'm, I've got a Facebook account. I'm not ashamed of it. I've got a Facebook account. Many of you have Facebook and I'm friends with some of you, yeah? Some of you I'm not friends with because you've never asked me to be a friend, I guess. <laughs> <coughs> But what I see in these open forums on, 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 on um, online, and I've seen these open forums, I, see, I just see a lot of striving to no profit. And the social media, let me say this, and I've said it before. Last time I spoke, about two or three years ago, I spoke in Ohio on the World Wide Web in the local church. And I, you know what, I went home and people were saying that I was legalistic and tell people they can't be on. I never said you can't be on Facebook. Why would I be on Facebook? And tell you, you can't be. I've never said that. Facebook is a, or, 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 or any social media or any uh, internet. There's folks sitting now out there somewhere listening to this message today and listen to this week and be connected to the ministry. It's a great tool. Use it to, to His praise and to His glory. What I'm saying is don't let it usurp the authority of the local church. Because the local church is God's design for the body of Christ. Because it's the pillar and ground of the truth. There is accountability in it. But everybody, every time, and Richard stole my words on the other night, he's going to, or yesterday morning, and I showed them, I showed Robert, look at that, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Okay? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry that's got a computer now, and has got a camera, or a, he suddenly is now an authority, and he can heap himself people following him. And suddenly he becomes a celebrity, or she becomes a celebrity. 
A celebrity is a status achieved by friends or followers accumulated. Oh, I got so many followers of me, so many people following me, so people looking at my post. Oh, I need to post something. You know what you do when you do that? You p- and, and I was there. I know what I'm talking about. I'm guilty. I was guilty of that. Maybe some, to some extent still. But I post something, and now I'm waiting. Oh, is anybody going to say something about that? And I'm, you know, every now and then I go back, I log on and see, oh, no, nothing yet. Let's go back. Oh, let's go back. There, there is, hey, I got two likes, three likes, four likes. Five. Oh, 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 it's going, it's going, it's going, you know. And so before I know it, my time gets taken up with this device and taking it away from other things that I need to do. And I got to be careful about that. I need to redeem the time because the days are evil. And sound doctor needs to govern me in these things. Proverbs 25, 27 says, It's not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. <laughs> Everybody has a platform and can draw followers. And they're commending themselves among themselves. Comparing themselves to one another. Get away from that stuff. Get yourself a local church. Now, I understand if you're on, you're on, the, on the World Wide Web and you're somewhere there and you're down and out and you, you're out there and you're not able to move and not able, you, you, you've confounded your house, there's nobody around you, use it to His praise of glory. Identify with the local church. But don't be a free agent. And the greatest thing that gets me about a lot of the folks that I've seen over the years that I've been being involved with on Facebook is the, the thing is, is that the church is not a building. Duh, we all know that. What are you saying? You are telling me when you write the church is not a building, you're telling me I don't need a local church. Because I'm part of the body of Christ and I'm just fine here in my house. Now if that works for you, go for, go for it. It's maybe better you're not in a local church. Because you're just going to be divisive when you're in a local church. But that's one of the biggest issues that gets me, this issue of no local church. And Paul writes to Philippians, and Philippians, go with me to Philippians chapter 1, if you will. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timotheus, to the servants of Jesus Christ. To all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are Philippians. Philippi with the bishops and what? That tells me when he's writing this letter to the Philippian church and the churches. What is there? You have saints and the saints are made up of what? The believers, the bishops and what? So that means that's the order that God sets for us in Timothy and Titus, right? That's the order that God creates for us. And so, so if you have no local church, okay, who is over you in the Lord? Who's ruling in your, are you part of the local church? You know, those are the things that I have. And, and you, and you, what come from here is, that, well, there's no, I, don't, I don't have a commitment. There's no accountability. I want authority, but I want that authority without accountability. When I'm part of a local church, I'm accountable to the local church. And we understand our accountability is to Jesus Christ first, right? But you know what? I have an accountability to you as the members of the body of Christ too. And I need to observe those that's over with me, that's labored among me and among you over the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 and 12 says, Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you also do. Now, we can do that. I can edify you over Facebook or Twitter or any whatever, right? With the Word of God, if I deal with you. Even as also you do, verse 12 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So when you're a guy and a free agent by yourself out there, and you're not part of a local church, who is laboring over you in the Lord? Who do you acknowledge that's laboring among you? You just do what you want. And some of the biggest discussion facilitators and, and debaters that I've seen, not some of them, but the, and let me tell you something. We're talking about a minority on the, on, the, on, the, on the social media now. Okay? But what we've seen now is, is most of those guys, those guys that, they're the ones that always 
have, want to have discussions and arguments, and, and, and they, they, don't have a, they don't have a local church. They are not part of a local church. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'll show you something here. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I appreciate the social media. You know, I didn't know Brother David Reed had, uh, I'm not going to try and, um, you know, I don't remember, what is my, my, multiple myeloma. I didn't know he had it until Brother Richard posted something on Facebook a, a week or two ago. And I was like, wow, yeah, you know, I'm so thankful that he posted because I wouldn't have known. It. I, eventually I would have found out. But I thank you for that immediate effect that I can understand it, I can know it, and I can remember this brother and his ministry and and, and everybody who's involved with his family in prayer. So I'm thankful for that, you know. There's there's a lot of positives in this. But in 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you will, and verse, Paul says here, I can't read everything because our time's running out. Verse 22 says, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the, name, on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing they do gender strifes. And a lot of times I see the very opposite taking place on the social media. You're going to ask a question because you know it's going to cause a lot of debate out there. You know what is he saying? He says, flee youthful lust. You know what you have youthful... A lot of times, and, 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 and I'm one of those lurkers on Facebook. You know, I go on there and I go... Mm-hmm. And I'm not friends with somebody, but I can, I can reach their page through your page. Because you're friends with them. And I go look up there. And, and a lot of times I've done it, I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm in a high school playground now. I gotta be right. I gotta be right. Uh, uh, uh. It's like you know, like young boys, you know, little bulls going. Uh, 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 you know, let's, let's get those thing on. You know, that's how you feel. And I'm very discouraged a lot of time when I see that's going on there. And the very opposite of these verses, he says, "Flee youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart." But foolish and unlearned question, uh, uh, questions avoid knowing they do gender strives. That's what they're going to do. They're just going to create strife. And what does God say about the servant of the Lord must not what? Strive. Look at verse 24. He says, verse 23, verse 23 says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing they do den- gender strives. And the servant of the Lord must not what? Strive. So if I'm striving all the time, am I, am I operating under the doctrine and the sound doctrine? If I'm a striver, must not strive, but be gentle unto... Oh man, I've talked about gentleness. I've seen some guys calling some other believers some names. And there's no gentleness about that. There's no meekness. There's no patience. We need to be careful about some of these things. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 4. I don't know if you looked at that verse. Verse 3 says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, talking about sound doctrine, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strives of words, where have cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. You know what he's going to talk about, the financial gain, etc. But the principle is there. That's what's going to happen. Vain and provoking one another. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26, if you will. Galatians 5, verse 26. Verse 25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Because that's why we're filled with God's Word. We're walking in the Spirit. The Spirit working in us. Effect, the Word of God works in us effectually. We're filled with the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. 
So when we do this, and if I'm provoking, and I'm desirous of vain glory, and provoking, and envying one another, I'm doing opposite what the doctrine calls for me to do. And I'm using my platform, so-called in service of the Lord, for my own glory. And God calls it vain glory. Vain means empty. Man to seek his own glory is not glory. Some people like to have when there's an absence of leadership. Sorry, I've changed my mind what I was going to say there. Because I've got to be careful, diplomatic about some of these things. In absence of leadership, there could be people out there looking for truth. There are people looking for truth, okay? And then there's an absence of leadership. Well, many people can be led astray. And that's why we have to be careful. And that's part of why there's a local church. Why there's a local church? Because there's accountability. In Second Timothy chapter two. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter two. I'm starting to smell the food there. Are you? What's that? Yes, yes. Uh huh. So um, you know, years ago, years <coughs> years ago, I took a. Um, a group of teen boys on a hike in South Africa. And we were going to hike for at least uh, uh, three nights. It was uh, four days, but three nights. And we were going to hike. And um, on the first day, we had to do a, a good 10-mile stint into the, into the, in, you know, the, through the, up the mountain and what have you. And I, I'm trying to think of the words in English now. I can Afrikaans. I can tell you exactly what I'm talking about. But we, I took these boys, and um, teenage boys, and uh, by the, almost by the end of the first day, you know, I said, let's stop and eat something, you know, and I took our bag and we, we take some food out and get something. And I, and I offered this young brother, one of this one, brother, really excited about the Lord. I says, you want something to eat? He says, no, 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 man shall not love bread alone, but every word proceed out of the mouth of God. <laughs> All righty. You don't have to eat. We're going to eat, you know. So we eat and carry on. The next night we sleep, can find a place to sleep over, camp over. And the next morning we start going on. And he didn't bring a lot of food, you know. By the next day, he's like, hey, Des, if you have some of that, you know, I said, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but everywhere proceed by God's word, you know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, that's, the, anyway, Second Timothy chapter 2. Why, why, why did they come on that subject? Oh, the food. I'm smelling the food. I was going to ask you, you want to live by that food? You want to eat that or you want to be spiritually fed this morning? You know, what does you as faithful believers in the sound doctrine calls for you to do? Now, <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. <clears throat> now, let's go to verse 14. I'm sorry. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about with words to no profit, but to the subverting of the year is the overthrowing of the faith of some, okay? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of what? Truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker of Humus, Amanius, and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection has passed already and over the throw, overthrow the faith of some, somebody. So what do you need to do to prevent that? You need to study to show thyself approved unto God. You need to have sound doctrine, endure the sound doctrine, so that you can identify these things. Because what is our job as the ministers and faithful ministers of the Word of God is to prevent the faith of others to be overthrown. And we need to instruct them. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 4. Verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Let me tell you something about what Paul is saying here. As I said to you before, it's much closer to home than what we think it is. He's talking about somebody that has heard the truth because how can you turn your ear away from the truth? You heard the truth. It's been evident right in front of you. And what do you do? I'm rather going to turn away from that. And I'm going to heap myself teachers having what? 
itching ears. I want to hear what I want to hear. I want somebody to tell me some stories and some myths and some tales. I rather want to listen to that. It's easier for me to do this because this sound doctrine thing, it's too heavy for me to bear. So I'm rather going to turn away from that and listen to some stories that's going to make me feel good. And I'm going to listen rather to a guy that never opens his Bible. He's got a Bible sitting there. I don't know what, what version it is. And he's got a nice hairstyle, a nice comb hairstyle, and a nice smile. <laughs> and he knows how to flicker his eyes. And there's 40,000 people listening to him and feeling so good. They turn their ears from the truth. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? Alex Gers, right? No, I'm just... <laughs> No, not Alex. I'm just, I'm just joking. They have heard. They had it. They've heard it. And they possibly believe the truth, but they now turn away from it. And it's easy when self comes in the, pl- in, 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 in the way. Look at Isaiah chapter 30 about the nation of Israel. Isaiah chapter 30. And verse 10. Well, let's go read from verse 8 to 10. You know, that's something I always do, and I, I try not to do it, unlearn it. But, you know, I always say, let's go to verse 10, because my note says verse 10. I open the Bible and says, hey, I need to go from verse 8, you know. But I'm not sure, it, I'm sure no other preacher does that. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter, chapter 30, verse 8 says, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the seeds. It sounds like a condition of, our, of the body of Christ today. Or what has happened in the so-called name of the body of Christ today. We have to endure sound doctrine. The pastoral epistles, or we call it the pastoral epistles, especially Timothy and, 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 and Titus. And Philemon is a great, great book about uh, how to operate in a local church and, re- and receive somebody. But in the pastoral epistles, from Romans to, Romans to 2 Thessalonians contains the doctrine of faith of what God is doing today in the dispensation of grace, Right? Philippians, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, Timothy and Titus is going to give us the order of how to operate under that doctrine. And, and that needs to be order there, okay? It's an instruction. It's, it's instruction for the body of Christ, okay? Every believer, it's not just written, it's mainly written to, them, to the leaders, but every believer should know what the function of the local church and how it needs to be ordered. So every one of us, whether we're in leadership or not, should be reading and studying the, the, these epistles, Timothy, First and Second Timothy, and Titus and Philemon, so that you understand and know the order in the local church. Because if you don't understand and know the order of God, how He sets the order for the local church, a physical representation of the body of Christ, the living organism, on the earth, the pillar and ground of the truth. You need to study so that you know how to operate so that when you see things or what's happening out there that you don't find yourself not operating under that. You can have Romans to Second Thessalonians and understand some things, but you can fail to operate under the doctrine that God has given us in Timothy and Titus. And so, for example, what you, if you don't know Timothy and Titus, you will go online, for example, and you will call an elder out and, and, and accuse him of things. And you say, well, I do it about thousands of witnesses, not just one or two witnesses. No, the order is the local church. Within the local church, you bring him before one or two witnesses. And really, if you don't... Uh, 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 go for First Timothy chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 19 says, Against an elder received not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Then he says in verse 20, Them that sin rebuke. Verse 19 and 20, right? Them that sin rebuke before all, that others may also fear. Who's, what sin? Those that are making accusations against what? An elder. This is why I received among thousands of witnesses. No, no, he's talking about the local order church. 
You can say what you want and you can type what you want online, but you're not accountable to a local church. Don't make an accusation then. Anyway, Paul gives, and our time's up. Those guys are running for the food tables already. No. <laughs> <coughs> Paul gives to Timothy, in First and Second Timothy, a charge. A charge in First and Second Timothy to guard the glorious gospel of our blessed God in the local church assemblies. Titus is the need to set things in order in the local church. Timothy had a church already, and he needs to charge the members in that body of Christ. And and and, and go with me to First Timothy chapter one. Verse eleven says. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. That's committed to Paul's trust, okay? I, I love how the scriptures, and how, especially the King James, he used those words. He says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. If you think it's a glorious gospel of a blessed God, did you say amen? amen. Okay, so some of you think that, Okay. <laughs> It is the glorious gospel of our blessed God. And it's going to establish us. Okay? Paul sits there and he tells Timothy, and he's charging him with the guarding of that blessed gospel of our glorious God. Of, 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 of that, of, uh, that glorious gospel of our blessed God. And I, I don't have time to go through this, but I charge you, I'm charge you, sorry. I, 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 I beseech you, I ask you, to go through the scriptures in First and Second Timothy, go look at the verses where it says, "I charge thee," and I'll read a few of them. And we're not going to go through quaternion because we don't have time. Verse chapter 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 one verse three says, "As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that they might 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 as charge some that they teach no other doc- doctrine." The word charge means what? A charge is to, to transmit a message, to, to give an instruction, to lay on one as a duty, to command. And that word command that he has there in verse 5 says, Now the end of the commandment is what? Charity. That word commandment and the word charge is the same root word. Bear the same meaning or similar meaning. Okay? To have that end of that commandment is charity out of a pure heart. How do you get a pure heart? By who God has made you to be. But then allowing the doctrine of God's grace to effectually work within you, the pure doctrine, the unadulterated doctrine, the wholesome words, working you effectually that belief, comes, uh, uh, and of a good conscience and faith unfeigned. You know what is the result of the, the doctrine which worketh in, us and worketh in us effectually? It is going to be faith that is unfeigned. It's not going to be hypocritical. It's not going to be a, a false faith. It's going to be a true, genuine thing. And the charity that's going to be a result of that is going to be a true charity. I see a lack of charity many, many times. I've seen a lack of charity in my own life in dealing with people that's contrary to, that I'm struggling with. And I see a lack of charity in my own life. You know why it is? Because I put myself in the place of the sound doctrine. And that's mean my heart's not pure and I don't have a pure conscience because I'm not allowing the sound doctrine to work in me effectually. Because what does charity do? It endures all things. Okay, you read First Corinthians chapter thirteen, and so Paul charges Timothy, and and, and first, uh, first Timothy chapter one verse eighteen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. You don't have to turn there because we don't have time. First Timothy five twenty one. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter six verse thirteen fourteen. I give thee charge in the sight of God. 1 Timothy 6.20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Keep it, hold on to it, observe it, preserve it, guard and obey it. 2 Timothy 2.2, commit thou to faithful men. 2 Timothy 4.1, I charge thee therefore before God and Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and dead as he's appearing. Charges to Timothy to set these things in order. And the reason for this, why he's giving this charge, is because... To, to God, this glorious gospel of the blessed God is due to the fact that the, that the faith is under attack and is a departing away from it. And there's verses through First and Second Timothy that tells you, reprobate concerning the faith. They resist the truth. They will not endure sound doctrine. They have erred concerning the faith. They have erred from, erred from the faith. They denied the faith. 
Some having put away concerning the faith have made shipwreck. They depart from, you see, all in all. That is why we need to endure sound doctrine. And Timothy is charged to hold on to and teach this. And he's to instruct you and I through the script. And you and I need to be instructed from the, from the scriptures to teach no other doctrine. But the doctrine that we receive of the Lord Jesus Christ. As he's given it to the Apostle Paul in the revelation of the mystery. And we need to hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. When we do that, and when we function under the doctrine of God's and the doctrine of His of His grace, and this is a sound doctrine, you know what's going to happen? I am. It's not going to be about me. It's going to be about us, the body of Christ, and what can we do to edify the body, the body in love, and charity. My focus is not going to be, oh, I've been so hurt by you because you say so and so about me. But I'm going to realize that I'm going to see us as, as, the, as the body of Christ and members in particular of that. And I need to give, Timothy had to give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. He had to fight the good fight of faith. And in closing, in 2 Timothy, I'm going to close here because our time's running out. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I don't mean to, I mean chapter 4. Paul says at the end of his ministry, and, and I like what John said last night. Is, you know, he comes with all, he says, uh, um, he says, uh, verse 6, is, For I'm now ready to, dep- to op- offer the time of departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. He says, tell me, okay, it's all yours now. <laughs> we are still operating in Christ's stead here today as members of the body of Christ here today. And this charge that is laid that Paul laid to Timothy is laid to you and I today. And we need to take it serious. And we need to stop playing church. And get on with the work that God has given us to do and endure afflictions, endure hardness, endure sound doctrine and make a stand for it. Let me tell you something up front. The cost is high. And the cost is sometimes so high that we feel we can't bear it and we can't handle it. It's too much. And I've been there several times. I'm almost there about once a week. You know? <laughs> Always said a perfect church will have no members if, that, if that's the way it operates, but we know it doesn't operate that way. Okay. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Why don't we let that be a prayer of our heart as we endure sound doctrine? At the end of our ministry, at the end of our life, we don't know when it is. John spoke about that last night. Your life can be snuffed out like that. I can get on, put up it and I can get on this plane this afternoon and that thing can go down somewhere between you and home. But it's done, it's over. Can I say with Paul, I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. We have a course. And it's not the course of this world. It's the course that God has laid out for us in Romans to Philemon. The doctrine is according to holiness. And we need to endure that doctrine. We need to make a stand for that doctrine. And not to make a a stand by striving and fighting and quarreling and all that stuff. Somebody wants to fight and strive with you. You know what I do when somebody's fighting and striving with me? I'll listen once or twice, talk a little bit, and I'll just move on. I don't have time for that. And enough other work to be caught up with. You know, what I found in the body. I need to start preaching again. I've got to be careful now. But somebody has a pet subject that they have in the Scriptures. And that takes their whole life up and their whole ministry. And everything is about this little subject that they have. And they will take up your time with that subject that you can't believe it. And there's a bigger thing going on, what God is doing. So let's be careful about that. Let's endure. Let's be, show charity. Let's live. And, and you know what? When I say when, let's show charity, I want, to, I want to define that. You cannot show charity even if you like. You need to allow the Word of God to effectually work in you that believe, and it needs to be His charity that's worked out in you and produced in you based on the Word of God. 
Let him work it out. Let's fight the good fight. Let's finish our course. Let's keep the faith. I have a favorite saying always that I say to people, keep the faith. Oh, no, brother, we don't have to keep the faith. The faith keeps us. Yeah, you're right. The faith keeps us. But Paul says, I've kept the faith. And if Paul says, I kept the faith, then I want to say, I kept the faith. Not based on my performance, but based on my understanding and learning of what God's Word is telling me and believing that Scripture, this book. Because it's central in our lives. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You that You um, enable us and, and that we can endure sound doctrine. We know that Your Word says that it's going to be a, a hard thing to do to endure. But we thank You with, your, with your, You that being faithful because You are faithful. We are not faithful. You are faithful. And You will keep us. And we praise you and we thank you for this by Christ Jesus alone. Amen.